Hello. I wanted to make a video about instant static mesh components and how you could use them to make multiple meshes in a world, use one draw call, and make those meshes look different. So, for one, you're going to have to start with UE425 at least. It's not supported in 424. So I'm going to start that and I'm going to create a new blank project. I'm going to use C++, of course. I'm just going to call it something arbitrary like instance test. I'm going to create the project. So the reason you want to do this is that for each draw call in a game, your rendering is slower. And if you're trying to do this on something like Quest, uh, you know, VR, mobile, something that's slow, then you may your budget may only be 100 draw calls, let's say. And so to get as many objects uh, in your world as you, as you can and to have as rich environments as you can, you're going to have to figure out a way to get your draw calls down. Um, and this is one way. Let's say you had a bunch of bushes in the world and you wanted some of them to look slightly different, but you wanted to instance them. Um, and this is how you would do that. Okay, so to start with, let's go into our preferences. We'll set small toolbar icons because I like them. I'm going to turn off hot reload. Turn off auto save. I'm going to save our current level because we're just going to use this to test with. Okay. Then I'm going to go into the project settings, go to maps and modes, and set it so that when we return we will start in this map. Okay. So let's make our C++ base class. It's going to be an actor. I'm just going to call it instant static mesh actor. And I'm going to go to the project. I'm going to open it with Rider, which is what I like to use as editor instead of Visual Studio. And at the moment, um, it is free. So let's close this. Our rider is opening up. And some reasons why I like Rider instead of Visual Studio is that it's faster. Um, it supports uh, viewing blueprint changed properties so that if you change something in a blueprint, you can see it while you're editing in C. And that helps you to understand what other people have changed. It just, it's just good in, in many ways. Um, so here's our actor that we just created. First thing we want to do is clean it up. Let's get rid of begin play, or well, let's keep begin play, but kill tick. So this actor is not going to tick. All right, and we want to set this start with tick enabled to false. This way the blueprint will not have start with tick enabled checked, um, which can be confusing, especially if the actor cannot tick. Um, and let's get rid of this. The fewer actors ticking, the faster your game will be. So tick as little as you can, and if you do tick, uh, only tick and see. Um, okay, so first thing we're going to need is our component. So let's make it a U property visible anywhere. Let's see, U instant, there it is. Okay, let's name it appropriately. Okay. Now let's construct it in our constructor. And um, in this case, I want it to be um, static. I like do that. And we can set it to uh, block all collision. Why not? Okay, so that's what we'll do to start. Let's compile. Close Epic. Okay, so let's make a blueprint class based on our class we just made. And if we look in our class, here's our instant static mesh component. If 
for our mesh, let's just use like a engine um, sphere. So I'm going to go down here and find a sphere that is the basic shape sphere. There we go. Okay. That's fine. And let's just make a couple instances for testing. Let's make the second one at like 200x. Yes. Yep, there we go. And we want to open this up and look. Here is where you can create your custom data. So let's make one per sphere. So we're going to have one custom data float per sphere. Oh, let's set this to always save on compile. That helps. Oh, look. I forgot. Need to set root component. There we go. So, what are we going to need? We're going to need a material. So let's make a new material for our test. And just to demonstrate it, let's use two colors. So one will be red and one will be green, like this. And let's lerp between the two colors so that we can easily tell when our custom data is working. So per instance custom data is right there. So here is the data that we're going to pass in to our instance, which will change its color. So if you hook this up, you'll notice that you get an error and that's because this operates in vertex space. So we need the vertex interpolator to go from vertex space to pixel space. Okay. There we go. And we need to make sure our material, uh, let's see, is used with static lighting and used with instant static meshes. Right. Okay. There we go. So now we can put that on there. And while we're in here, let's go ahead and turn our view options back off for the engine and plugin content. There we go. Okay. So now if we put this in the world, you can see we have our two spheres. They've got the same material and they have no difference, right? But if you change the custom data, now you can see, look, there we go. I'm getting different colors on the single instance. And to verify that this is working, let's, I'm going to turn off the VR plugins real quick so that that quits starting up. I'm going to install RenderDoc as well so that we can verify this shortly. Okay, so I'm going to close this, save, and I want to set the the instance data programmatically. So let's go instance static mesh component set custom data value. Let's see. Yeah, here we go. Set per instance custom data. So why don't we just set the first index? One of these is going to let me do just what I want here. Yeah, there we go. Which instance do we want to change? Which index into the data? And what's our value? And we want to mark it as render state dirty so that it changes what it looks like. There we go. So let's recompile. Now let's go back, oh, whoops. Let's go here and change that custom data back to zero. Now, if we play the game, oh, we can't really see it. Let's do simulate, there we go. In simulate, we can see that it's changing that value on begin play, which is awesome, right? So that means we could spawn instances programmatically um, by something like add instance, See? You just supply the transform and it will add an instance programmatically. Then we could set the custom data value. Um, 
so that we could make multiple instances, as long as they're the same mesh, right, and the same material, we could change what they look like by altering custom data in the material. And can we verify that this is one draw call? That's why I turned render dive on. So let's just take a screenshot. And if we look into render doc here and scene, let's see, there's the base pass. And you see, there we go. Our spheres are two instances. So that's a single draw call. If we were to go up here and view draw, well, yeah, that's the draw call over here. Yeah, look, 44. They're one draw call. So this is great. Let's say you had, like I was saying before, a bunch of bushes in the world and you wanted to change their color slightly and you wanted them to all be one draw call. This would be how you do it. Thanks.